In the name of the living God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Over the last year and a half, I have become much more aware of the extent of human pain and suffering in the world. Panic running wild, climate change and environmental catastrophes, racism both active and passive, terrorism both domestic and global, democracy threatened by toxic partisanship, economy inequity and widespread poverty, immigrant challenges, and much, much more. The problems are so huge that it almost seems hopeless, and yet God calls us to care and to make a difference. God calls us to do something for the common good, for humanity, for the planet, for all of God's creation. And that's what I'm most concerned about in the sermons today and next Sunday. As luck would have it, or maybe it's a God thing, the scriptures for this Sunday and next Sunday address this issue, the nature of God's call during challenging and troubling times. Both Ephesians and John extend this week's messages into next week. So I invite you to join me as we consider how might we respond to God's call to action in times of crises. It's a tough issue. Let me, let me be clear, I'm not talking about our solving any of these problems listed at the beginning of this sermon. I realize that the actual solutions to these problems depend on science, funding, legislation, technology, and lots of other practical factors that are beyond our expertise or access. What I am talking about is wondering how each of us or maybe us together, but how each of us might participate in something that would bring healing, health, and hope to humanity on a local basis. Something practical and meaning, something personal, something God has called us to do. And if everyone did this, it would transform the world. The three points that I'll be focusing on this week and next week are community, spirituality, and transformation. And I believe that keeping these three faith factors in relationship with each other is the best strategy for our navigating the troubled waters in which we are swimming. What does God say? What does the community say? What is the quality of our faith journey together? As you heard, Ephesians, talk about, talk, Ephesians talks about community, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. And as you heard, John talks about spirituality. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Both scriptures talk about transformation. In Ephesians, it's transforming a dysfunctional community into a faithful and loving community. In John's Gospel, it's transforming physical nourishment into the spiritual nourishment of the Eucharist. In the church calendar, August the 6th, recent day, is a feast of the Transfiguration. It's actually a very important event in the, in the life of the church and often overlooked. Here's a quote from Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah. The cloud came over and came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The human Jesus was transfigured and transformed even more into the divine Son of God. Baptism is transformative. Not only is baptism the initiatory rite for Christians, but the baptismal covenant reminds us of the ongoing transformation of our faith. I love this prayer in the baptismal liturgy. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon us and these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Those are words for an ongoing transformation for all of us. The Holy Eucharist, which we now are celebrating, is also about the transformation of Jesus Christ tortured into Jesus Christ murdered into Jesus Christ resurrected. It's a transformation from pain and suffering into hope and joy. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. In our faith, when we talk about transformation, it comes in various forms, shapes, and scopes. It might be an emotional epiphany about God in our lives, uh, one of those mountaintop experiences that Jesus had, that Moses experienced when God is there with the individual. Or it might simply be our daily faithful living and spiritual journey. But whatever the degree is of this transformational experience, it always has something to do with movement from one place to another emotionally, with our soul, with our faith, sometimes even with our bodies. And that movement, that movement, whatever shape it might take, is often also moving from pain and suffering to hope and joy. 
Transformation leads to a lifelong practice of moving deeper into an identity with Jesus Christ so that we may truly do God's will. Community, spirituality, and transformation. A trinity for our time. That's serious stuff. So let me lighten it up just a little bit. With a dog story. <laughs> I call this story Hannah and our 30 minute mile. I'm, that's not an Olympic record. Hannah and our 30 minute mile, a transformative experience. So stick with me. I love Hannah. Sometimes we call her Happy Hannah. She's our puppy mama. And Every day, almost at noon, Hannah and I go for a walk down this country lane through, um, through an environment um, forest. And, and, and as we get into our rhythm, Hannah's walking right beside me, and as we get into our rhythm, and I'm talking, I'm walking, and and is walking and smiling and 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 I, and then I do begin to to share my problems with Hannah. But we got to remember that this is a this is a transformative experience for me because it's my dog and me in God's creation. I mean, there's wildlife out there. There's birds chirping. It's truly magical experience for me, spiritual experience for me. And, and it is for Hannah. She lives into her doghood, you know. She can smell things, all kinds of things. She can see, she can watch, she can listen. So we're both entering into our, our element. But, as I just said, it's even more transformational than that because Hannah's my therapist. Because when we, what I do is that when we're walking, I start sharing with Hannah my, you know, my, my problems. And I, now, these aren't the big ones. These aren't the big ones. But you know, like I burnt the toast or got up late or really not happy with how I did this or really worrying about this. But it's a time when I just sort of talk. I talk. And Hannah, I'm walking and talking and Hannah's walking and looking up at me smiling with her tongue hanging out. And I just keep walking and talking and she keeps uh, walking and smiling and and, and occasionally, you know, she'll stop to smell something or to look at something or to listen to something. And uh, she's a multitasker. She can do that and still listen to me. I don't feel, you know, rejected or anything. And, and, it's, and it's really an important time for both of us. You better not tell everybody this. They may think I'm really off my lid. But anyway, when we get to the end, we say a little prayer. And then we turn around and come back. And usually on the back, tri the back trip, um, she dashes through the forest for about 30 or 45 seconds, comes right back to my feet, sits down, and looks at me with that look. I deserve a treat. <laughs> and I say, yes, you do, Hannah. You're, you're good. And Hannah says, I'm not good. I'm really good. <laughs> OK, transformation is a huge issue really listening to community and to God, sometimes doesn't come very easy. But you know what? Sometimes it does. Sometimes we are really willing to be changed by God. I want to I wanna thank our pianist for Precious Lord. There couldn't have been a better preface for my sermon a hymn that's used often, sometimes at, at funerals. It's, a, it, it's basically saying, put my trust, you know, precious Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. Lead me on, lead me on. That's, that's a transformational concept. What I'm trying to say here in this point is, don't get scared about this language because some of it can be done quite easily and, 
and naturally. And at the same time, in this time in our, in, in our, in our lives, we are challenged to do big things. God can lead us on to do both. I end with something that's called a Franciscan blessing. Um, it's in the spirit of St. Francis of Assisi. It comes from Franciscans, um, even though Francis didn't actually write it, but it fits what we're talking about and where we are in this world. May God bless you with restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all that they cherish so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in the world so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. <laughs>